Good morning, Araxians. This video will be a bit different because what we talk about will be applicable to all first-person shooters in some fashion. In my last guide, I went over my top 10 tips for how to improve your infantry performance in Plant Side 2. Those tips focused on situational awareness, game sense, and overall maximizing your ability to remove targets before they had the chance to remove you. I also promised to you that my next video would cover the different forms of recoil on plant side and the attachments post arsenal update to minimize them. Well, while making that video, it became apparent to me that another topic needed attention first, aiming. Making a comprehensive video about aiming in video games is no slouch. First of all, it isn't one that I'm exactly experienced with. You see, I, compared to actual god tier players, suck at aiming. Sure, I'm slightly above average, but I still have no right running the kind of sessions that I do given my paltry aiming statistics. Luckily, however, Planetside 2 is a safe space for traditionally bad FPS players, and I've recently taken the time to do a lot of research. Furthermore, the subject of aiming is cluttered with conflicting opinions. It is really difficult for gamers to learn what they should be doing. The truth is that aiming in FPS games is extremely nuanced and it takes a lot of effort and focus to work to improve your own performance. That is why this video is not going to be a quick and easy, get rich quick guide where I can give you one set of settings or tips to quote, get good. For this video, I've put in far too much effort in researching, scripting, and filming, but my goal today is to share a thought process and key details that pertain to becoming an aim god in any FPS so you can decide the best approach for your own unique situation. And for that reason, stick around until the end. Starting out, I want to hit on a few of what I'll call guiding principles for aiming. These are things that actual good FPS players typically agree on that might not be self-evident to everyone. Each could honestly be their own entire videos individually, but they are incredibly important to think about together. First is that aiming is impacted by many, many variables, namely physiology and environment. A helpful analogy I will use frequently throughout this video is for you to think of your aiming ability as a machine with many inputs, buttons and dials if you will. Pressing or turning these inputs will affect the resulting output of this machine, your aiming performance, and in varying ways as well. Some effects large and others unnoticeably small. To give you an idea of just how much there is to think about, I'll list off a few of our inputs. Strength, size and control over each of your fingers, your hands, your arms, your elbows, your shoulders, even your chest, shape, weight, and wire, or lack thereof, of your mouse, grip type on your mouse, size and material of your mouse pad, size and angle of your keyboard, height of your desk, chair, armrests, and monitor, the FPS you get in game, your own height, current posture, energy level, mood, and even what you had for breakfast today. All of these variables and countless more have some impact on your aim. I didn't even mention sensitivity or DPI. We won't cover how to meticulously perfect all of them, but it is important to understand our problem in order to frame our solution. Also important to note is that the way your machine behaves is different from everyone else's. With so many variables and unknown relationships between them, even worse, incorrect assumptions about them, it can become almost impossible not to develop bad habits as you wander blind. I count myself amongst lost FPS players who have developed bad aiming habits. And if you clicked on this video, I'm willing to bet that you do too. This is why our second guiding principle is that consistency and comfort are king. What do scientists and engineers do when they need to solve a problem that they don't fully understand? They guess, and they do so purposefully and intelligently. If you use common sense and research, you can likely get yourself set up with a mouse that works well for aiming, a grip and posture that works for you, a decent mouse pad, and a plan. With practice, this will get you to a certain performance level. From there, we try to improve, and this is where we must remember that consistency is king. If we change too many of those inputs at once, we won't be sure about where changes in our metaphorical machine's output or aiming performance are coming from, what's going wrong, what's going right, and why. Your body and physiology need time with each group of what we'll call settings for your machine, so you can get a true result to reason off of and inform your next move. Furthermore, when you want to change something, it should be only slightly different from where you just were and what you were just used to. 
This way you can draw accurate conclusions in addition to acclimating faster to new conditions. Take a moment and think of yourself as on a map trying to find the tallest point possible, but you can't actually see the land initially. You make your best guess, maybe you reason that the windiest spot may be the tallest. Once there, take the time to learn the position you chose and slowly inform yourself about its immediate surroundings. Maybe it isn't that windy after all, or the ground slopes upward in a certain direction. And then using that new information, make a small, incremental step in the direction you believe will elevate you the most. Notice that if you make too large of a step, or change too many variables at once, you'll essentially just be making a new guess and likely remain lost. Whereas by taking the time to see what works and doesn't work, and changing things only slightly many times over, you will arrive at your goal much sooner, and crucially, with knowledge about how to remain there. This silly example is the basis for what a lot of us know as differential calculus, but in layman's terms, it's the foundation of optimization problem solving and applies accurately to helping answer why you and I are such noobs on the battlefield. Linked to consistency is the fact that comfort is also king. We cannot reliably test ourselves and compare results if we introduce unneeded fatigue. The goal, after all, is not just to maximize aiming performance, but aiming performance that lasts over ideally long gaming sessions. That is why after this video, I'd like you to take my later mentioned recommendations and apply them to yourself to find a comfortable initial guess to work with. Now time for our third guiding principle and the real meat and potatoes of aiming, that all forms of aiming are useful. There is this great debate of arm versus wrist aiming and which is better for gamers. Throw that garbage out your window right now. First off, there is more than just arm and wrist aiming. If you want to become an aim god, you will at least need to familiarize yourself with aiming with your fingers, hand, arm, elbow, shoulder, and even chest to accurately test your abilities. That doesn't mean that you'll end up using each type of aiming. You likely won't use all of them, but each one has their advantages and disadvantages, and you should know about them. The general rule of thumb is that smaller muscle groups equate to higher precision with smaller ranges of motion, the larger muscle groups equate to lower precision and a larger range of motion. Think of it like painting. An artist will use their entire arm to draw smooth, large features of a subject while making great use of their fingers, hand, and wrist to add small features with descriptive detail. Secondly, your body and surroundings, what you find comfortable, and all of our other machine inputs are going to dictate your sensitivity, which in turn will inform how much of each type of aiming you should be performing and in what scenarios. They all are related and are unique to you and only you. So, what are the types of aiming? Well, going from smallest to largest, we have one, micro adjustments, which utilize your fingers and hand muscles to make fine, small movements. Think to use these muscles when moving within a small circle around your crosshair in game. Two, we have flicking, which primarily utilizes the wrist to acquire nearby targets. Three, swiping, where your forearm is introduced to quickly move your mouse further distances. And four, tracking, or the art of remaining on target no matter the enemy's movement. A sort of fifth form of aiming is using your elbow to move the mouse vertically for flicking, swiping, and some tracking. For micro adjustments, your hand is typically enough. Your elbow, like the forearm, is a larger muscle group and thus has less precision. So flicking vertically can be challenging since we don't have a wrist equivalent that easily moves vertically and we are therefore less precise. So when people mention wrist aiming, it typically refers to flicking and arm aiming refers to swiping. You can see that if you were to only use one type, you'd essentially be using only one tool and ignoring the rest in your toolbox. This isn't necessarily your fault and it all comes back to comfort. Most people don't have the posture to reliably swipe their mouse using their forearm or elbow, so they rely on their wrist to simply do everything, or they hardly use their fingers and hands because it may hurt or their mouse may be too heavy or shaped oddly in comparison to their hand and grip style. These are things you want to discover about your current environment, bodily abilities, and change at the start. Your environment and its constraints, how big your mouse pad is, or the ergonomic capabilities of your chair, for example, inform your posture, and thus how easy it is to use the different types of aiming. Not having access to all types of aiming will only limit your potential for aiming performance. So don't focus on what equipment will directly make you perform the best right now. Focus on what equipment, 
posture and placement on your desk gives you the most comfort while still being able to perform the types of aiming I just described consistently and over long periods of time. It's one of the hardest parts, but you will be putting yourself in an invaluable position to unlearn your bad habits and teach yourself good ones. Once you have a good posture to work with, you can start thinking about sensitivity. Sensitivity is made up of DPI and in-game sensitivity settings, with your field of view, or FOV for short, playing a role. Your DPI dictates how far in windows your mouse will move across the screen, corresponding to an inch of movement across your mouse pad. Changing your DPI affects how a certain in-game sensitivity value feels to you. You want your DPI to be comfortable to use when out of games, unless you are fine with swapping between values regularly. Typically, a value of 800 is a good starting point that is easily recommended, though some will prefer something lower, such as 400, or higher, such as 1200 or 1600. Before we move to in-game sensitivity, you'll want to figure out what FOV you like playing at first, since it will affect how sensitivities feel in-game. PlantSide 2's field of view setting is vertical, not horizontal, so the in-game maximum of 74 corresponds to a true horizontal FOV of 90, which roughly equates to human vision. Most folks will find success between 65 and 74, while some prefer higher FOVs. In many of these clips, you'll see me using my stupidly high setting of 105. I use this mostly for cinematic reasons, and I'm likely to move this down to 90 in the future. There's a lot of fisheye effect going on at higher FOVs, and you'll notice that the gameplay appears to be faster as a result. You can increase your vertical FOV past 74 by clicking the wrench icon in the game's launcher and the open game directory button to edit your user options to INI file. This is also where you can set other graphical settings not accessible in the in-game menus. The gist of FOV is that the lower the number, the more zoomed in you are. This means that heads are bigger and easier to track, but that recoil and screen shake from your surroundings is much more noticeable in addition to having less peripheral vision. Higher FOV is the opposite. Smaller heads and less jarring recoil and screen shake with more peripheral vision. While different field of views don't have a huge impact on your sensitivity overall, for some, they can subconsciously mess with your muscle memory and aiming in general. So it is a good idea to figure out what works well for you and your situational awareness in game and lock it in before moving on. Now for in-game settings. You have different types of sensitivities. In planet side, you have hip fire aimed and scoped for infantry, as well as vehicle, vehicle aimed and aircraft sensitivities. For this video, we'll focus on the infantry values and how to tweak them. Once again, your metaphorical machine inputs dictate your comfort, so there is no one size fits all number here. A good starting point, however, is to set your sensitivity so that one large swipe, the largest you can comfortably perform accurately, or the size of your mouse pad, whichever is smaller, turns your character a full 360 degrees. I will stress that starting out, that swipe distance should almost certainly be what is most comfortable, not what your mouse pad can hold, unless you have a tiny one, in which case you should likely replace it. What this will do is ensure that from a neutral home position on your mouse pad, you can comfortably turn a full 180 degrees around to acquire a target that is behind you, covering any gameplay scenario that you need. While on the subject of sensitivity, let's talk about how we lower it correctly. First of all, why lower your sensitivity? Well, the answer might be that you shouldn't depending on your situation, but in most cases, your starting sensitivity won't push you to use more of your muscles, more of the tools in your toolbox. Furthermore, lowering your sensitivity slowly opens up more of your mouse pad to utilize and build muscle memory comfortably. Speaking of muscle memory, let's define it a bit more. We need to train our brains how to move a certain distance in a certain direction as quickly as possible given in-game information. We also ideally need to do this accurately each and every time. So we teach ourselves to use the right muscles for certain tasks by changing our environment and posture, but how do we make things second nature? By staying consistent. Through repetition, we can train our muscles how to move instinctively so that our brain barely needs to think. Perfect for an FPS. Take this one step further and you can see that lowering your sensitivity and opening up more of your mouse pad that gets frequently used makes building muscle memory much easier. Just think about it. If you have a very high sensitivity, it is going to be a nightmare training your brain how to aim 10 pixels versus 40 in any direction. Both will be from finger aiming involving minute distances to move the mouse. 
With lower sensitivity, not only will the distances for each movement be farther apart, more discreet, and thus easier to process in your mind, they might even require different muscle groups to perform accurately each and every time, making it even easier to process and internalize as long as you remain comfortable. So, do we just try and move our sensitivity down quickly to reap the rewards? No. The whole point is to maintain comfort and build muscle memory so you can actually practice the different types of aiming effectively. Think back to the analogy of finding the highest point on a map. You've assessed that lowering sensitivity is a good direction to head in, but you still must do it in tiny increments because you don't fully understand the relationship it will have on your comfort, posture, etc. All of your other machine's inputs. I recommend lowering your sensitivity by at most 5% at a time. How frequently you lower it will be determined by how often you play and how aggressive you are with your training. If you play for hours on end every day and specifically focus on aim training frequently, you can probably get away with lowering it weekly. If you play only a couple hours a week, this may need to be a month to month process to still draw accurate conclusions on what's working versus not. The phrase hurry slowly comes to mind. Your best bet is to take small baby steps when lowering sensitivity that will enable you to quickly acclimate to a new value as you practice. Speaking of practice, holy hell, we have finally arrived. Aiming in FPS games can be broken down into six families of actions that we will practice individually. We have crosshair placement, which is where on the screen your crosshair is positioned as we move around before seeing a target. We then combine that with strafing, which we use with crosshair placement and the A and D keys to effectively aim without moving our mouse. After that, we have flicking, ideally with the wrist, to reach nearby targets, and then swiping using the arm for farther ones. So far, we've gotten our mouse on target, and the next skill will be to remain on target, tracking. Our last action is to deal with recoil characteristics as well, burst firing in the case of games such as Plant Side 2, and spraying for tactical shooters like CSGO or Valorant, where you have predefined recoil patterns. Practicing these six actions continuously is commonly accepted to be the best way to train your aim and improve the fastest. Whether or not your practice in-game or in an aim trainer will actually help you depends on how closely it aligns to improving these six skills. For crosshair placement, I recommend first recording 10 minutes of yourself playing normally. This is a good idea in general to get a baseline for what you do right and more importantly, wrong. Keep track of where you point when you are both moving around as well as aiming. Most of you will see that your mouse is pointed too far downward, and that whenever an enemy engages you, whether by surprise or on your own terms even, you need to unnecessarily move your mouse upward. If you need to engage quickly, which oftentimes is the case, you automatically end up needing to move your mouse away from its most comfortable position on your mouse pad. That's a recipe for failure. Remember now, vertical movement is mostly controlled by your elbow, which isn't exactly the most precise tool for aiming, so proper crosshair placement helps minimize this disadvantage. Since we want to use good aiming to prioritize lowering time to kill, and aiming for the head helps us in that endeavor, keep your crosshair roughly at head height at all times. Just make a habit out of it. Minimizing the variance in crosshair height builds muscle memory, consistency, and reduces our bodily limitations for where we can aim and with what precision. By now, all of those things should sound like music to your ears. If you are in plant side 2, many of the interiors for buildings have horizontal markings that are at roughly head height of infantry players. Practice lining up your crosshair with these lines as you move around bases at all times, and continue to review random game footage periodically to track your progress. Additionally, use situational awareness to place your crosshair wherever enemies might show up. Account for lag in this scenario by leaving a small gap between any cover and where you aim since you will only detect their presence after they have already been there for a fraction of a second. If crosshair placement minimizes the vertical distance your mouse needs to move to acquire a target, Strafing helps to minimize the horizontal distance. By using your A and D keys, you can reach your target on the horizontal plane, hopefully at head level to start. This isn't going to be the fastest method since you are limited by player movement speed, but it is the basis for all kinds of peaking of corners, momentum control, and is often used as a movement mechanic in FPS games to throw off the aim of your enemy. In tactical shooters like CSGO and Valorant, it is also imperative to use these keys effectively to halt your movement to avoid the incredibly high bloom of your weapon while moving. This is done by holding down one key to aid in acquiring a target and building muscle memory to tap the opposite key before beginning to fire. This is the fastest way to halt your character's momentum, enabling you to fire your weapon accurately. 
In Plantside 2's VR Training Center or any training map in other games, practice moving side to side, out from cover, etc., and stop right on a target's head. Do this over and over until it's second nature. For flicking and swiping, we are now concerning ourselves with targets we need to get to fast. For flicking, targets should be within range of our wrist for an added level of precision. Figure out how far to the left and right in your chosen posture your wrist can move. If you can, try and quantify this angle. I don't want you to use this range of motion to flick because it isn't what your wrist is comfortable doing for all that long. Find a smaller distance that is comfortable with your posture and internalize that so that you can just use your wrist to make that sort of shot. For swiping, you will need to become accustomed to using your arm to move larger distances. You can use both your arm and wrist, but I view it as best to begin training with the two separate unless it feels more natural to use both right off the bat. This way, we will understand which is giving us the most trouble, and we can focus on that. Practice of flicking and swiping can certainly be done just by playing the game, but since these skills aren't necessarily preferable ways to aim all the time, aim trainer courses can be particularly helpful to get reps in. Slowly flicking between targets and gaining speed while maintaining accuracy isn't a bad idea. Neither is having fixed targets on a horizontal head height line every 45 degrees to shoot at. I'll link a few similar aim training maps in the description. The latter will help practice crosshair placement to a certain extent as well. On to tracking now. This one is rather simple to practice. You can easily do this while in game since it's much more common than flick shots. There are also some great aim training maps that I will link for tracking targets. Some even emulate common FPS player movement, shuffling specifically. Again, you will build up muscle memory for using different forms of aiming to track players hopefully for different durations of time to really test things. Lastly, we have to deal with recoil. If your game has predefined fixed recoil patterns, then it's all about playing the game, studying the pattern, and reversing its motion consistently by building muscle memory. Most large tactical shooters will have training maps that can help with this. For other games with recoil characteristics, you will need to study these greatly and how your specific gun typically behaves and how to counter its downsides. If we were talking about Planetside 2, like I mentioned earlier, my next video will go over this part in depth, so subscribe if you haven't found a reason to already. Luckily enough though, Planetside 2's weapon traits emulate many other shooters as well. Nevertheless, I will share a few tips on this topic here. They would be to focus on burst firing often, aiming down sights when realistically possible, and paying close attention to your weapon's effective range. Most guns develop bloom over time, which will ruin accuracy. Depending on the gun, let up on the fire button for a split second after 3 to 7 shots have been fired. That number will mainly depend on the weapon's rate of fire, first shot recoil multiplier, its amount of vertical recoil in general, and the range you are firing at. You will be tempted to hose down your enemies as soon as possible, and if you are in spitting distance that's okay, but sacrificing that damage output for mere milliseconds almost always benefits you more in engagements. Additionally, aim down sights when you can. You will have more control over the weapon and easily know exactly where you are aiming. Attachments that make hip firing easy are fun but they really should only be used on guns that favor extremely close ranges or mid-air combat, as you will never be as accurate at medium or longer ranges without aiming down sights. Speaking of ranges, pay attention to them. Guns in many FPS games will have damage drop-off over distance, recoil that makes them exceedingly difficult to maintain precision at range, and slower bullet velocities that require you to lead targets from afar to properly track them with any sort of accuracy. These characteristics dictate a weapon's effective range. Understand yours and always keep it in the back of your mind to make good decisions. Keep things easy on yourself at first and stay within that range. As your aiming improves, you will notice that you can push for kills farther and farther outside of that range. This is because your tracking and burst firing ideally will become more precise and disciplined. For all six of these skills, a common mistake for players is that they see pros flick, swipe, track, and adjust with incredible speed and dexterity, and they try to emulate them initially. You are not them. Maybe one day, but for now, you need to take it slow. If you try to go as fast as possible, you will immediately sacrifice all accuracy and precision and only waste your own time. The famous phrase to remember here is that slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. Any speed right off the bat will be erratic and inaccurate. Start off slowly and focus on attaining the accuracy and precision you'd like to see when you can eventually move quickly when your bodily functions can catch up to your mind processing the game. Over time, the accuracy begins to become second nature 
and the slow nature and rhythm means that you will begin to build muscle memory faster. You can then begin to increase speed, once again by a small amount, with the goal of maintaining that level of accuracy. Some people have found a lot of success actually using a digital metronome to keep a certain pace and build discipline while training. If you need something like that, by all means, please use it. Before you begin setting goals though, for Planet Side 2 specifically, I will warn against being too harsh on yourself regarding headshot rate. That statistic only counts whether the last bullet you used to kill an enemy was to the head or not, not the number of bullets that do end up hitting their head. You should certainly aim for the head whenever you can because the difference in time to kill is massive, but your headshot rate is going to vary a good bit depending on the way you burst fire, make micro adjustments, and the gun you are using, its type and recoil characteristics. That is why I usually recommend putting more weight on the overall accuracy of your weapon and just trying your best to headshot with the goal of reducing time to kill. That means not sacrificing much accuracy to headshot a target. The hits per kill gun statistic on FISU linked in the description is a great indicator to pay attention to. It tracks the average number of landed shots it takes you to kill an enemy. With that out of the way, one last emphasis I will put on practice is to really work on all aspects of aiming little by little to actually see results. Sure, take the time to focus on weaknesses, but you need to remember to eventually come back and practice all six aiming skills in addition to any others that apply to your FPS game specifically. Really nice flick shots look cool, but if that's all you practice, you will most definitely be a shit player and certainly not well-rounded. A 7 out of 10 across the board will perform much better than someone who is a 10 out of 10 in two of the six categories and a 3 out of 10 everywhere else. Your enemies will pick up on your weaknesses oftentimes subconsciously, and exploit them. Five minutes dedicated to each action every play session is still just half an hour. Closing up here, I want to highlight that all of this still benefits massively from consistency. Remember the machine we have been talking about. The conclusions you draw are rock solid when you put in the effort to keep those inputs consistent and only change things slightly each time. Consistent posture means repeatable mechanical abilities and added muscle memory, Consistent training schedule means steady progress. Even a consistent mood has a huge effect on your performance and outlook on aim training. You now have no reason to rage or mauled. You know if you use these steps, you will get better. Keep cool, calm, and collected, and recognize that you will have days of bad performance. You can't possibly control it all. Just keep your eye on the prize and a routine going. Not doing so will only introduce unnecessary error. That's going to do it for me today. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below what's worked for you in the past when training your aim. I'm sure someone will find it helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to be alerted on future videos. And while you're down there, check out that little join button as well if you wish to support the channel in a really meaningful way so that I can continue making longer projects such as this one. Now that you are all set and aiming like pros, check out my top 10 tips for improving your first person shooter performance up above to really put it all together and I'll catch you on Araxis.